Today's video is sponsored by Uppercase Designs. What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to paint this mountain lakeside design. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the requirements over on my Patreon. It's completely free for you to join in with the same palette and anything else that you may need for today's design. Take your time with this design, enjoy each individual part of it and when you're done make sure to tag me in your finished creations whether it be on Instagram, Facebook or anywhere else where you can find me. The best place you can find me though is my Discord where you can come and share your work with other Procreate enthusiasts who are sharing their work daily. And if you want even more tutorials from me, I post more tutorials just like this and I post three exclusives every single month to my Patreon supporters and the catalogue sits over a hundred exclusive tutorials to my supporters over there. So if you want to support me in the work that I do, you can hit the link in the description down below and come and check me out over on Patreon. And with all that said, enjoy today's design, trust the process and let's get started. But before we do, I want to introduce you to the Nimble Grip 2. Not only does this grip provide two varying swooped edges for comfort when writing or drawing, but this new version has also been engineered around the Apple Pencil's native features. It now boasts a new design that includes a flat edge, which allows you to use the Apple Pencil's native features, such as the double tap feature where you can double tap to switch between an app's tools, for example. And my favorite part, you can now charge the Apple Pencil without having to take off the grip. How awesome is that? Now, if you want to check out the Nimble Grip 2 for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below where you can find all the different colors that it comes in. And with that said, let's get back to the video. So once you've created your canvas, we're going to go ahead and go up to our actions and we're going to go to the canvas tab. Let's edit the drawing guide and let's edit it here. And let's change a 2D grid to 500 as I typically do. And then that way you can use the grid against my screen to then use it on your screen to then see where I've laid things out and you can scale things accordingly based off of the grid. Now, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is go to our layers and we're going to go to our background color and we're going to grab the color in the very bottom right of the palette and hit done. And then on this empty layer, we'll go up to our colors in the top right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this color here. It is the top of the third column from the right. Our brush is going to need to be the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. And if I tap on the monoline brush, we're going to go to stabilization and we're going to bring that right down to around about 40% and probably bring the stabilization itself down as well so that we can get some jitters and bumps and lumps in there should we want them. So it's still got a little bit of smoothing, but nothing too intense. If we hit done, I'm going to keep the brush size at whatever this is, so around about 6%. And the first thing I want you to do is draw a line across the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to around about sort of halfway, slightly lower than in this row here. Pop our finger on the screen once you've held your finger down at the end. Pop a finger on the screen and that's going to be the base. And then from there we can go ahead and draw in the mountain. Now the mountain is going to go ahead and sort of swoop off from the bottom right. And it's going to swoop to around about sort of this point here. So you can put like a little marker if you want as a guide. And then peak wise, we're going to run up to around about here. And so we're going to swoop that up. Maybe we'll also create another peak that's going to sit maybe just there. And likewise, another one that's probably going to sit there. And then as we've sort of done on this right hand side, we'll also put like a little marker here, pretty much bang on middle of the canvas. So we're going to make our way through these points just like a dot to dot. So we're going to zoom in and it doesn't matter if you see any sort of uh, sort of specks of your initial bumps, your little sort of markers there, because we can always go ahead and change them afterwards. So we're going to dip down into here before then going back up again, introducing some interesting shapes up into here, creating our mountain peak, lovely stuff. And let's bring that one down. Let's bring that one down a little bit into here. You can always create like the points like I'm doing here and then just let go and just create the additional peaks that you want to create. And trying to create something that looks a little bit interesting. Now I've rotated my canvas here just so I can make sure that this sort of flat plane down here starts to have some character and then just runs up and into here nicely like so. And if we drag and drop our color in, you'll get the overall silhouette. And then from there, you may want to go ahead and just start to think about, hang on, can we actually make that a little bit more of like a graduation? So let's bring that in, drag that into there. So we get a bit more of a swoop in there. Potentially, you may want to sort of sharpen up some additional areas there as well. So you can really spend some time at this point sort of tinkering just to make sure that the peaks are exactly how you want them to be, because the peaks give you everywhere that you can add the color to. So I actually do want to sort of sharpen up a bit of a, a bit of a point on the very, very top there. I dragged that in. That's been a bit lazy, really, isn't it? And then if I zoom in on the back area here, let's go ahead and sort of 
bring these points out maybe a tiny bit more as well and we'll drag the color into there like so and now we've got sort of three peaks that i can see that we can work off of so with that done we can now go ahead and add in some color on them so we're going to go to our layers we're going to create another new layer we're going to tap on it and add a clipping mask to it we're going to go to our brush library we're going to go into the option of charcoal so if we can find it and we're going to use the burnt tree brush i love this brush for adding in sort of snowy effects now we're going to go to our colors We've got two tones. We've got a highlight tone and a shadow tone. The first one is the highlight tone, which is the middle of the third column from the right. Brush size is set to 10%. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure that our lighting is primarily on the right hand side. So that's where we're going to add the brighter tone. So simply coming down from the top of the peak here, you just want to kind of bring this down and kind of swoop it round a little bit. We're looking for these really smooth kind of swoops, but nothing too low. You don't need to come all the way down towards the bottom. The brush in a minute when we come into the option of smudging will sort of take care of that for you. So that's just some very basic snow in there. Maybe even bring your brush size down to like a 4% and then take a look at any other small peaks that you've got in there just to add some extra detail. I've also got another peak over here on the right hand side and I want that to kind of come in along here and like so. I want it to make sure it just joins into the party over here. And what we'll do is we'll also try and just lightly maybe just spec a few additional areas here and maybe even another plane of some sort there that's just getting a little bit of the snow on the surface. And that's all it needs to be. Let's also go ahead and create a new, another new layer. So we'll tap on the base shape and create another new layer. We'll go to our colors and we will grab then the bottom color in that third column from the right. And then we're just gonna add like a little bit of the same kind of effect, the same kind of snow but on the rear of the mountains as well. So up here, we're gonna add some in here. Now, because we've got like a predominantly sort of brighter area, I'm actually gonna bring the brush size to, let's try and put it in the middle of these two. Let's drop it down to 6%. And I'm just gonna sort of bring that down here. I'm gonna, I, I really like it when mountains have a dark line that kind of separates the two. We'll bring in some more color there. You can leave dark spots. So just focus on swooping that line down a little bit off towards the left hand side and the more sort of random little areas that you can connect potentially with some of this sort of extra tone you'll add some more detail maybe we can get like a little speck of that color in behind there and maybe even just a tiny bit in there i don't want to add too much but we will layer it all together now what we'll do is if we go up to our highlights first let's start with them on that layer we can go to our smudge tool if we tap on our smudge tool, we're going to go to painting and the Salamanca brush. Now I've got the opacity set to about 57% and I've got the size, it's fairly large. I'll probably bring that down to around about 20%. Now what we're going to do is we want to get those lovely smooth swooping lines. So I'm just going to rotate my canvas a little bit because it's a bit easier for me to rotate it and do it this way. I'm just going to push very, very lightly until we start to push some of the texture and swooping it in this direction. It's really important that we get the swooping effect. We want to push down from here and just be brave with it. We have the luxury of obviously being able to undo anyway. So if you do need to, go back and do it again. Just repeat the whole process. It's totally up to you. Let's maybe bring that down a tiny bit again because I've got a slightly smaller area here. So I'm going to bring that down to around about 14%. It's not critical, by the way, the brush size, but just so that you can access the right areas. I'm just going to swoop down this other area of highlight. Now at the top, it's up to you. You can maintain some of the texture or you can lightly, just very, very lightly start to push it and you'll leave a few of the dark spots. So maybe like if I get a 5% brush size, we can maybe swoop this little tiny mini peak here and kind of swoop it towards the other one and kind of break it down a little bit. So it's up to you. The brush size and the opacity, shall I say, is nice and low. So you can really build up the process, but it's the swoop that's really important. It just really ties the whole design together and the aesthetic that we're going for. So when you take a look at it, it should swoop down, just really fall off and you can always continue to adjust it. You know, you can really kind of maybe get back in here and start to push it a little bit more horizontal as it makes its way down and towards the flatter planes of the land. But you're just smudging it away, creating this beautiful aesthetic. And don't forget about your other sort of peaks over here as well. If you've done the same as me, we can bring that one right across bring that right across swooping that down smudging it away pushing it across again a bit more of a flat plane lovely stuff and then again it's totally up to you do you want to leave the top can you get in from the top and maybe sort of swoop down in a 
yes we're swooping down in the same fashion but maybe at a slightly more downward angle here on this left hand side just to try and create like a bit of an additional kind of extra ledge there almost so you're kind of pushing down at different angles but again trying to abide by the nature of the swoop so taking a look at that i'm pretty pleased with how that's coming along that looks really really pretty let's go ahead then and do the same on the opposite side though so let's go back down to our shadowy tones we put on the opposite side and repeat so just pushing them across but you're doing it in the opposite angle now so you're creating that kind of triangular shape of your mountain peaks and you're creating the effect of the, the downward swooping nature of the point. So we're just pushing that around a little bit. Maybe you can get back in there and really kind of smudge it. I'm just curving it round at the very end just to try and flatten it out. So you get like quite a steep aesthetic. But again, don't be afraid to get up in here. And if you want to get rid of some of the gray tones, or maybe even swoop them upwards a tiny bit towards the, the snowy edges. If you want to, you can do that. And I, I, again, I would recommend leaving a little bit of a dark line. I think they always look the best. You kind of have that tip off effect. Let's push this down. Lovely stuff. Let's do the same up here as well. So let's go to a 10%. Now you don't want to push too far down, obviously. Kind of leave a bit of a gap in here, but we'll try and create the same aesthetic swooping down. Lovely stuff. And again, if you want to leave the top area with some of those specks, just leave them. Like they do look good. And they add. That's the best thing about using that uh, charcoal brushes. It will give you all the kind of specks in there that you can then leave and work off of. But if you want to, like I'm doing, you can push right up towards there if you want. Have that real solid sort of dark line in behind. And then let's maybe sort of tone this down a bit more by smudging from out here really kind of taking it down a little bit, almost creating like a bit of a shadow right off of the top of back area here. There we go, look at that. Little bit of a shadow just poking in from behind there. And then let's maybe try and swoop these down like so. So I've got rid of quite a lot there, but we end up with this lovely solid line. I put a little bit of gray in here as well, so I can just kind of just push that down a tiny bit just to smudge it out. There's also a tiny bit in here as well, which again, doesn't need to be anything too much in terms of attention. I'm gonna switch back though to my highlights because I've just missed this kind of little area here in terms of just getting rid of it almost a little bit more. I don't want it to be too grainy. I don't want it to be too texturized in certain areas. And that's very much gonna be dependent on your layout of your mountains. Now again, just make sure that you're happy with the smudge. You know, let's make the brush size again, like even larger, maybe around about sort of 30%. And you can smudge up from the bottom. You know, you can take away a little bit if you want to. You can swoop back up the mountain. You can swoop back up these peaks, which takes away a little bit of the white from them and introduces a little bit more of the darker tone. And then you can re-smudge it back over the top. Just make sure that the very bottom has a really nice, smooth run out. Now, once you're done with this, what we can then do is, is if we tap on the actual base shape here and we tap on it and we add a mask to it, and we make sure we're on the mask and our color is set to black at the bottom of the disc here. Go to your brush and change it to the option of the soft airbrush under airbrushing. If we set our brush size to something, let's go smaller than that. Let's go to about sort of five or six percent. We're going to zoom out and all I want you to do is just kind of run your pen along here and just fade it out without creating too much of a large fade out, but just going left to right, lightly blending that out. Maybe make the brush size a bit bigger. Let's go to about 9%. We want to get rid of the solid line, but we don't want to go too high up. And we just want to get rid of what we can see there in terms of a, a nice solid line being taken away and just fading out the bottom. Maybe make your brush size a tiny bit bigger and just take away a bit more if you can, just to give it that kind of hazy look to the very bottom here so that your peaks kind of just run out. They just run out into the sort of mistiness below. So I'm just gonna try and keep taking away from this a tiny bit more just to really blend it out. And you can really blend it out on the edge over here if you wish as well, you know, kind of take that down. So it's just the, the mountains poking through. You could use something like a clouds brush if you ever wanted to add some more texture to it. But something like this should do the trick. And you've got these beautiful mountains now just fading into the rest of the scene. Now there is one extra kind of effect that you can integrate in here just in case you want to. If you go to your layer here, so for the snows, etc. If you go to your eraser and we go to charcoals and the burnt tree, if you set it to something like 4%, you can get in here. So which layer am I on? I'm on the highlights at the top here. 
you can if you need to just go down the edges here that separate the two sides and maybe refine the shapes should you wish to you know see what you kind of create sometimes it's not necessary but sometimes you may want to just tone down some of the shapes or readjust the kind of flat side of the mountain here that faces our sunlight so here i've got quite a flat line there so maybe i could go ahead and sort of introduce like a bit more of a, a sort of low point in here bring that over to the left hand side and kind of create more of a sharp ridge line and then again you can go back in then with your grays if you need to as well for example here if i go to a two percent brush size i can sort of take this down separate the two sides a little bit more maybe even sort of fade that down a little bit using the eraser just to sharpen up a few edges you might get some really cool effects but it's just that extra final piece de resistance that you can add to your design should you need to sort of just want to add that extra little element of detail and refinement to it we have the luxury of being able to do that of course now for me, I think I'm pretty happy with that. And if I make any other adjustments, it'll probably be after the recording. So let's carry on with our design from here. Now we're gonna to go to our layers. Now we're gonna swipe from left to right on all three of these elements here, including the mask and group it together. And we'll just call it mountain, just so we're making sure that everything is nice and organized and we can collapse that group down. Feel free to flatten it if you need to. But again, if you wanna make refinements later on, you shouldn't necessarily do that. We're going to create another new layer. We're going to drag it underneath our mounting group. We're going to go to our colors. Grabbing this color here, the top of the second column from the right, we're going to go to our brush and make sure it's airbrushing and the soft brush. Set the size to around about 20%. And what we want to do in this bottom area here, we're going to go ahead and sort of darken this up, up to the sort of bottom row there. And then as you sort of come up from the bottom row into here, just create like a bit of a blend. Ultimately, you should have like a little bit of a kind of light line there that separates the two. That tells you you've done it correctly. So as long as you've got a nice little sort of gradient down here. We're then gonna go ahead and we're gonna go and work on our backgrounds before we move towards the sort of more foreground areas. So creating a new layer, we're gonna drag it underneath that dark area of color we just created. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll just create two new layers anyway and swipe from left to right, group them together and rename the group and call it Sky. Now with that done, we'll go to our bottom layer in the Sky group. We'll go to our colors and we'll grab the color here in the top right of the palette. Now we're going to go ahead and use the soft airbrush again around about sort of 20%, but you're going to need to start off really, really light because this color here is the pink that you're going to see in the back of your sky and you're going to blend it over to the left hand side. I am literally just super, super delicate and gentle on the screen here. We're aiming for this bottom right corner here to be a little bit more colorful. And then just sort of blending that up, maybe in a bit of a curved fashion, a little bit up towards the blues, but just leaving a little bit of room down here and a little bit of sort of luxury should we want to add some more colour to the sky. Don't overdo it early doors. Now, before we add any more colours to this sort of background gradient, I want to get your clouds in there first. So we're going to go ahead and using the other empty layer in the sky group, we're going to go to our colours again and make sure it's still that one in the top right of the palette. But we're going to go to our brush. We're going to go into textures and we're going to use the Dove Lake brush. And let's set the size to around about sort of 10 to 15 percent to start with. At the top here, I want you to start to sort of factor in that the clouds may be a little bit bigger. And as they get further behind the mountain, they get further away. Therefore, they should get a little bit smaller. So starting sort of up here, we're going to go in like a circular motion just lightly to start with. You want them to be a little bit darker on the right hand side of your sort of screen here or your right hand side of your clouds and then Fade them out on the left hand side just a tiny bit. So just create like a bit of a drag off there. And then I don't want you to necessarily go too low past this point here of our grid just yet. We'll introduce another one that kind of starts here and runs across over towards this right hand side. Another kind of large one up in the top there. And then we'll bring the brush size down to around about say 6%. We'll focus on one that's going to sit sort of in behind here of our mountain and sort of run up a little bit up onto there. And then again, on the left hand side, just kind of fade that out, create a bit of a drag off, but create kind of nice rounded shapes. You're going around in lots of little tiny circles like so, and they can sort of go up like that. We can refine the shape though in a moment. That's perfectly fine. And then here, we're just going to run this one down and kind of let that one run a little bit off like so. So it's really kind of falling down up here. I'm going to bring it backwards a tiny bit as well. 
Now this one here, I actually want to move it. I'm going to grab my selection tool and freehand. And if you separated them with enough of a gap, you might be able to do the same if you need to and just create a loop and then grab your cursor and just move that across just for a moment, just a little bit over towards this left hand side a bit more and then tap on your cursor when you're done. And that's looking pretty good. The only thing we need to do is just kind of just drag this one out a tiny bit on its end point there and kind of fade it out now a little bit on the left. Now, once you've got these kind of shapes in play, we'll go to our colors and grab the lighter tone, the middle of the far right column. Same brush size, really, about 5% this time. We're going to go ahead and go on the top edge here, and let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's go to 8. We're going to add in some white areas. This is where the lightings land in on your cloud. So the underside is what we just drew a second ago. Maybe even create like a patch or two on the left side here, but mainly on that right-hand side of your clouds, you want to introduce these lovely, big, rounded, round fluffy shapes and let them kind of fall off at the bottom again don't go too big or on the ones that fall below that line again so bring it down to five percent and then once you get onto here you can maybe other five or six you know keep fluctuating and flirting with the brush size bring that down a tiny bit more here we can go ahead and run this up onto the edge up onto that top edge let that run off onto the side a little bit more lighting in behind there lovely stuff now at this point we can then go to our smudge tool we can tap on our smudge tool we're going to go into the option of airbrushing we're going to use the medium brush i will set the opacity to about sort of 70 percent we've got 68 there size wise that is set to something probably about right but you can go to eight if you want to do it a little bit quicker really and what we're doing is on the back end here we're going to smudge we're going to go round in a circle and we're going to sort of feather this out a little bit more and then you're going to want to sort of make your way up towards those sharp edges. So I'm going to bring it back down to the uh, six, five or six percent mark here. I'm going up towards those sharp edges on the top. So the sharp edges up here. And we're just kind of smudging that in. And you want to kind of pick and choose where you want to sort of feather out almost with the smudge tool. You're going around in circular motions, fading that out, smudging them sort of closer together, but giving that really lovely soft look. Push them off to the left. So you're looking to really push these clouds off to the left here you know i'm trying to push the color around a little bit of these darker tones here but i'm pushing up towards the brighter edges here so pushing up towards the brighter edges but then pushing the darker edges off to the left so pushing these darker edges up towards those bright spots so this cloud here has got some lovely sort of leveling to it it's got loads of sort of depth and then you can push them around a bit more but just smudging them out picking and choosing where you specifically in your design you want to smudge out some of these top edges as well so maybe you want to leave them but you're just smudging them out pushing all the lines backwards as you go just trying to i'm trying to bring this dark tone around if you if you're watching what i'm doing as we're doing this i'm trying to just smudge this out pushing that dark tone across and now i've got a dark side to the underside of there i can push up in here pushing up towards so you can bring the dark uh, up towards the edge or you can push the light down to the left it's totally up to you and it's also really nice if you do it in a random order you know push them to the left push them to the right push some of the darker tones up towards the light tones and vice versa that way you'll get some lovely variety in your sky and in your cloud work so here i could probably bring the brightness across a little bit more to like kind of brighten up the top area there here i could probably do the same as well and just kind of fluff that out but nicely keep some of the lightness to it don't let the darkness of the cloud be too prominent potentially but again that's totally up to you really but you'll end up with these beautiful clouds and we've still got a little bit more to go here but i think they look really really lovely and really soft really soft really fluffy and they kind of should start to blend in to your sky so right on the ends down here you can see i'm pushing the highlight and actually getting rid of it somewhat because i want the clouds to somewhat kind of fade out towards the bottom I don't want them to be too dominant here. I don't want them to stand out in any way. So let's go ahead and just see where we want to sort of get rid of. I've got another big cloud obviously up here. So let's push some of the dark in. Let's then also push some of the, the lighting around. But most importantly, especially on the back end here, I want to get rid of a lot of the, the Dove Lake and I really want to feather it out. You could have definitely used a bigger brush size, but you wouldn't have had enough precision to just slowly but surely build up your clouds and just smudge them out. Let's push some of the darkness into this cloud a little bit, giving it a bit more character. But then also bring some of the highlight round on the top edge of it, pushing that round. 
circular motions all look fantastic. You get a really fluffy, soft look to it. And then all the little edges that you leave nice and sharp, like up here on this edge here, I'm gonna leave the majority of this. Maybe I'll come back to it should I feel it's necessary. But some of these lovely sharp edges, just like here as well, you can leave it because they just look like really sharp, really crisp areas of detail. You don't have to get rid of absolutely everything, but we do want a little bit of a soft aesthetic. That's why we keep doing the back area here. Now I've just increased my brush size quickly, just so I can really drag off some of these here. Just making sure that we've got a nice soft, very soft diffused effect on the back end of some of these clouds. I really don't want them to have too much of a sharpness on the left hand side. But you should end up with this lovely sort of effect like so. And if you need to maybe move things around, maybe you could use something like liquify and the option of push. And if you set that to a large enough size, maybe you could move this cloud across a tiny bit should you necessary, you know, really bring them two together. You know, potentially you'd have to bring that down a little bit more so you don't interrupt this one, but you could potentially bring this one across the sky a bit more. Maybe focusing it a bit more on the left hand side. So there's always room for sort of tinkering and messing around. I don't want it to look too similar to this one, but I don't also want this one to have too much of a gap here. So maybe we could mess around with it later on, but that's a nice looking sky. I'm really pleased with how that looks for the moment. Let's again add in that extra color. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. We're going to just leave it where it is in the sky group and we'll go to our colors and go to the bottom of the second column from the right. Your brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush. We've got a brush size. Let's set it to around about sort of, uh, let's go for about 20%. And just down here in the bottom right, I'm just going to introduce a bit more of a yellowy tone. So our, our sort of sky blends between the colors a little bit. So really, 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 really light pressure and blending the colors together. We've got a really soft kind of pastel kind of sky approach to it. And again, towards the latter stages, you may want to go back to say the purple tone here in the top right of the palette and maybe kind of bring a bit more purple up the screen maybe and a little bit more behind the mountains. It's totally up to you if you want to sort of fill out your sky with a bit more color. So that is going to be our sky all done. We can now move into some of the landscape elements. So you can tap on sky if you're done with it, collapse it down. We're going to go ahead and create two new layers in front of the mountain group, swipe from left to right and group them together. We'll call this, let's just call it land one, because it's the first piece of land that we see in front of our uh, mountain. We're going to go ahead and go to our layer here, the bottom one out of the two. We'll go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and we're going to introduce a nice darker tone. So we're going to grab this color here. It is the top of the fourth column from the right. Your brush wants to be set to the option of, it, we're going to find the rad brush, which is under vintage. We're going to use the rad brush here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set our brush size to around about sort of the 8% mark. That looks pretty good. And the first thing I want you to do is draw in a line. Again, this is kind of the bottom area of the land and that's going to run to around about here. So we're going to just draw that in. We're going to draw in a line. It can have little dips in it. It doesn't need to be perfect. But as long as you kind of go back over yourself and start to just fill in the land, making sure the majority of it towards the bottom has got like a dark solid line and we can work off of that. I'm just going to build that in, let that get really, really thin off to the left hand side, but ultimately just blocking it in like so. And then when you're done with that first sort of base layer here, imagine that's the land. You can then go ahead and start to maybe draw in some trees. Now your trees don't need to be anything particular. Again, I've got a brush size set of 8%. You can just draw in some straight lines to start with. Draw in lots and lots of lines, try and lay out some forest effects. And this is a little bit further back, so you don't need to stress too much about what it looks like. Notice how as I get towards the left hand side, my trees are start, going to start to get a little bit smaller. Maybe sometimes you can start down that end if you feel it's more comfortable so you can work out what your minimum is and then just keep going from there. I also want to make sure I've got nice variety in the heights of some of these as well as some, kind of the gaps as well. Making sure that there's not, you know, it doesn't have to always be sort of super packed and dense. You can have little sort of empty spots. It's more natural and realistic. And then taking a look at your kind of trees here, you can just go ahead and just zigzag down it, progressively getting wider as you get towards the bottom. So nice and sort of narrow at the top and then progressively getting wider. And then we're gonna go across all of our trees. And just again, remember that these are miles away. These are miles away. We're trying to get the silhouettes of those trees in play. So we've got to do that for all of these trees. Again, progressively making them a little bit wider as you make your way down. 
don't worry too much about the overall look we've got more colors as well to introduce on top of these so they will start to sort of fill out a little bit more with the forest but we're again going for that kind of painting aesthetic and so we will add some smudging in here as well so what you're doing right now won't be the final sort of silhouette in a sense you will end up with a little bit more character in there a little bit more sort of uh, stylistic effect just like the rest of the design let's go ahead and just carry on i'm getting right close towards the end here these ones we can just maybe sort of chuck in some color at the base of a little bit something like that so overall that's what that kind of looks like but we want to make sure it's nice and kind of dense so i'm going to now sort of just zigzag my pen along the base of all of those wiggling my pen all the way through kind of filling in the gaps we want the land to somewhat get a little bit sort of raised here on the right hand side as that graduation effect to it it doesn't have to be dramatic and you can then introduce maybe some more smaller trees again if you need to kind of repeat the same aesthetic we're just slowly trying to build up that little foresty kind of vibe over there on the right hand side bring that down just chucking in a bit more color towards the base just to show again the density of it you wouldn't see too many gaps through from our distance there's loads of trees in there and if you need to maybe even grab your cursor maybe say for example grab say distort and maybe just grab the top here maybe grab the top right and maybe make that a little bit taller as well we've got great tools that we can utilize so tap on your cursor when you're done just raising that forest up now what we're also going to do is we're going to smudge this as well so we're going to go to our smudge tool we're going to tap on our smudge tool we're still using the medium brush and i think we can still get away with that so let's go to five percent on the brush size and what i want you to do is just kind of smudge upwards now because we have the grid in play of the drawing guide you can if you want to tap on this and add the drawing assist it's now using that grid not only just as a visual reference for you but now you can perfectly swipe upwards and just drag out some of the points at the tops of those trees we're not trying to drag them out too far we're just trying to smudge them out just a little bit like we did with the snow and we're kind of dragging them upwards now i'm going to bring that down to around about two percent brush light so i can be a bit more in control now as to exactly where it goes in these much smaller areas but you kind of want to smudge the base a little bit and then push up the top of the tree just a tiny bit just kind of breaking down a little bit more of that rad brush and then creating a little bit more of a sort of nice smooth blend out of the top of the tree and you can do it multiple times and again now the brush is only allowed to go upwards because it's using the drawing guide so we can't draw accidentally at a slight diagonal angle you can see I'm just going down the land there right towards the end and I'll probably even carry on with a 1% brush size and just try and get rid of a tiny bit of that land. Maybe even I'll push this horizontal here just to connect this together a little bit. So just pushing the black across there just to connect it all. And you'll end up with this slightly sort of soft diffuse look to it, which is exactly what we want. We don't want to have too much of that rad brush in there. And any gaps that you then see, especially in your larger trees, maybe just smudge up a little bit from the bottom just push up a tiny bit more from the sort of base creating that really almost blurry kind of aesthetic to it another thing we'll do is we'll also go ahead and just fade out the bottom here but just like we did with the mountain so we'll tap on this layer and we'll add a mask to it we'll tap on the mask and we'll actually just go ahead and let's turn off the drawing ref uh, assist for a moment so let's tap on the layer and turn off the drawing assist if we then go back to the mask make sure our color is set to black our brush just needs to change to airbrushing and the soft brush. We're going to make the brush size nice and small though, around about sort of 5%. And I just want you to just take away that bottom edge again, just kind of fading that out, just creating a soft aesthetic to it. It doesn't have to be too dramatic. You don't need to get rid of it quite as much as say the mountains, for example. You can have a little bit of a solid line there. It's totally up to you, but as long as it just sort of disappears off into the distance that's the best bit that just fades out the land it just comes to an end and we'll get rid of this so let's just fade that out a little bit more i can see a little bit of the rad brush sticking through i'm not opposed to that necessarily then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our layers we've got an empty layer in this group we're going to go ahead and add some green onto this layer so in this layer tapping on it we're going to go to our colors we're going to grab the middle color in the fourth column from the right we're going to go ahead and go back to our brush of vintage and the rad brush and set the brush size to around about 4%. We're gonna zoom in on the trees. Light source is somewhat off to the right hand side. So down these trees, I want you to just to kind of zigzag your way all the way down. You don't have to go all the way into the forest though. 
but zigzag your way down and you can at this point kind of also refine a few of the shapes if you need to but you can go down majority of the right side coming over sort of the middle point of the tree creating little areas of greenery you can come down a little bit further if you wish but try and keep the majority of the lighting towards the top again the density of the forest towards the bottom lower levels you wouldn't see and it's miles away we're not too interested we're going to end up with loads of detail that probably sits in front of this as well so we're going to really layer on our canvas and you may lose a little bit back here that's not to say to a sort of rush over it but as long as you can just add in some green and in certain areas you don't have to make the density sort of too similar you know i can jump over a few trees here and just skip over them breaking down that kind of real consistent level of green a little bit on here would definitely get some on this tree because of course there's nothing blocking the tree add some in there a little bit towards the the lower levels here maybe a little bit along the land like so just adding a little bit of extra green and when you zoom out this is what you should be left with and we're going to go back to this layer and tap on it and use the drawing assist just like we did before we're going to go to our smudge tool making sure we use the medium brush again brush size let's set this to about sort of two percent and we're going to smudge sideways this time we're not going to smudge upright so you should start to slowly get a few sort of streaks going horizontal so i'm just purposely going into a few of the trees pushing them horizontal and they should then smudge those solid shapes and make them almost look like sort of horizontal branches almost now don't forget you're not clipped in any way so what you smudge here will actually sort of have its own sort of space it doesn't have to sit to the main silhouette of the trees so i'm just pushing horizontal i'm mainly pushing from left to right at this point because again i want to focus the lighting on the the right hand side of some of the trees but don't be afraid to also push to the left so we're just tapping and smudging tapping and smudging keeping it really really light nothing too nothing too intense obviously you want to kind of keep the green a little bit within the boundary of the tree if you smudge it all the way over there it's not going to look right is it you got to keep it within the boundary of the tree. We're tapping and dragging, we're tapping and dragging. And again, the drawing assist allows us to just make sure that we're, we're only able to drag horizontally. We're just tapping and dragging. We get over towards the left hand side here where we're going to again have to keep smudging across, push that green a little bit along if we can. And just make sure when you zoom all the way out, when you see all those mini, mini details, that you end up with this lovely little forest effect and certain elements are slightly brighter, some are slightly more dull and that's perfect. Awesome. Let's now move into a piece of land that's going to sit on the left hand side. So we're going to go ahead and we can collapse this group down. We'll create another two layers and swipe from left to right and group them together. We'll call it land two. And then in the bottom layer out of the two, we'll go to our colors. We'll grab then the color here at the top of the fifth column from the right or the top of the sixth column. We'll go to our brush, we'll go to calligraphy, and we'll use the monoline brush just like we did before. And again, we're going to go ahead and draw in a main kind of silhouette of a piece of land. It's going to sort of go to here on our canvas. It's also going to drop to around about sort of here as well. And we're going to make our way out towards around about there. So you can kind of see that triangular shape that we're going to create, but you obviously don't want to create like a perfect triangle. You kind of want to have layers and sort of little avenues for the water etc that we're going to have later on and on the top area you want to kind of have a bit of a flat plane and just allow that to just run down and meet the water's edge i do like it when there's a little bit of a point on the end just so it's nice and sharp and then drag that color in take a look at your land see if you've added enough character to it see if you like the aesthetic maybe i'll kind of sharpen up a bit of a point in there as well just so i can work off of later next we'll go ahead and add in a tree and then followed by some bushes so we're going to go ahead and go to the empty layer above same color but we're going to go to our brush we're going to go ahead and change this we're going to need to find the leatherwood brush just the bog standard leatherwood brush under artistic uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll set the opacity to something a little bit higher i.e 100 percent and the brush size to start with i think we could go for around about three percent here on the brush now what we're going to do is we're going to draw in a main tree here that's going to run towards kind of a middle point here of this first uh, column so the sort of just above the halfway point you're going to want to draw down a straight line and that's going to be your tree and then 
It's up to you if you want to move it slightly to the left, therefore that you don't interfere with that mountain peak. It's totally up to you based on your design and what you'd like to preserve. So once you've drawn in a straight line like this, let's bring the brush size down to about sort of a 2%. And then starting at the top, you just want to kind of go left to right in a bit of a curved nature, leave gaps, and these are all your branches of your tree. You know, at the very top, you can sort of draw in a bit of a straight line again, just to create the very tip of the tree. But just go left to right, and then you should get progressively wider as you get towards the bottom. You can have it be a little bit skinny in certain areas. And some of these branches don't need to be kind of just individual curves. You know, you can drag down a few times here to create some interesting shapes. Sometimes you may find it a bit easier to also sort of jump down a little bit so that you can sort of build in the sort of foundations and the building blocks of your tree almost to sort of gauge how low and how wide you can get with some of the branches. You know, some of them can be a little bit sort of drooping down like so, but I can see the general sort of width then of the tree as I make my way down. So sometimes it's easier just to do this. Maybe you like to just go all the way straight down. That's totally up to you. I always like to give you a little bit of sort of space to understand how you like to work. That's always the best way. If you like to do it in a slightly different way, you'll remember that next time. So let's keep going, creating these curves. You can have a, a, a sort of random one. You can have one like here, just go a little bit wider and that's perfect. That just shows a little bit of randomness, a branch that's sticking out a little bit further, going a little bit against the grain of the rest of the tree. And we're just pushing all these sort of branches down, making sure that there's a good solid amount of color in here though. So a few of mine there got a little bit kind of light. So I'm just going back up there quickly. In the gaps, maybe you just do like a small little branch there. Here, we'll do another one. Curving that down, creating all the little elements off of it zoom out take a look at the whole tree just make sure you've not cut you kind of do want a little bit of an element of symmetry to it sometimes if you make something a little bit too unbalanced it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb and it can be really distracting for you and then also another thing to sort of factor in is just make sure you draw up and down the kind of main trunk in the middle make sure that is nice and solid as it makes its way down into this area here so you should have a lovely looking tree there now, before we carry on, we'll go ahead and we'll create another new layer. We'll go to our brushes. We're going to go into the option of textures and we're going to use the signet brush here. This has got a lovely little amount of sort of speckle on the outside of it. What brush size have we got here? Let's go for a 5%. Let's go for around the base of your tree. Let's bring that down. Sorry, a little bit down to 4%. Around the base of your tree, go round in circles and create bushes. We'll create a big, big bush there. We'll create another one here around a few times because you do need to layer this brush on top of itself so maybe you have like a, a long bush here that goes down towards the water's edge don't go right towards the very water's edge i've just gotten down to three percent here just so i can try and refine some of these shapes a bit more and then i'm also going to introduce another one off the back edge here another bush and i kind of want the bush to kind of run in towards the base of the tree here because i want the bushes in in my design to stick in front of the tree now we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go ahead and tap on our tree and create a new layer and tap on it and clip it to the tree. If we go to our colors, we want to go ahead and we're going to grab a couple of different tones. We're going to grab this one here, the middle of the uh, sixth column there. Same brush as we used before. So we're going to go back into artistic in the leatherwood brush. The only thing is though, we're going to bring the opacity down to 50%. We're going to set the size to around about sort of three or 2%. And again, kind of, following the rules and mindset of that side over there. We wanna go along what we can see as some of our branches and primarily focus a little bit of this green over towards the right hand side. Now I'm doing that all somewhat in one stroke. And in fact, I will bring the brush size down to 2%. Don't let go where you can, because if we go over ourselves again, you can see the buildup of the color here. We don't necessarily need any of that buildup of color. We've got it down to 50%, which should be bang on. However, should you want to run back over certain areas, which you think that you want to go ahead and introduce some more color to, you can do so by just literally layering on another brush stroke on top of the one that you just did. I'm going along some of these top edges, introducing some green, hopefully allowing the leather wood to do some of its work and really run in some cool texture. Maybe bring the brush size down to like a 2%, a, a very small 2% because there are multiple variations in there and run along some of your your top edges here, introducing some green, leaving the darkness on the left hand side, maybe just to act as your shadow tones right up towards the top, 
zoom all the way out. Make sure you're happy with the level of consistency and depth there of the, the green. Maybe you just need to introduce some more on the right hand side to get rid of some of those shadows right on the very right hand side. Let's take a look. Can I get rid of a few more? Still want a little bit of a kind of silhouette on this left hand side. Nothing too dark mind, but you can just tap a few times along the very edges there just to break down some of the dark tones. Wicked. Let's then go ahead and go to our layers, create another new layer. Tap on this and clipping mask it. Go to your color and grab the bottom color in the uh, sixth column there and repeat, except definitely keep your brush eyes a little bit smaller now, 2%, maybe even a 1%. We're going over the top of some of those greens, focusing our little areas of sort of light on this side of the tree. So you're going along your branches, you're trying to work out where would the light catch? Maybe there's just, just different pigmentation in the tree. So you're going along some of these edges here, mainly again, top edge of some of the right hand side branches in your design. A little bit more randomness to it though will look fantastic. So try and sort of, you know, maybe the odd little random patch over to the left hand side. I'm tapping and dragging a tiny bit. I'm not so much sort of just dragging. I'm tapping and dragging a few times here and there. Some of them can be a little bit more dense, like you can see there, and then keep other ones a little bit less, you know, a little bit sort of more skinny with the detail or the color, should I say, and the highlights. Go along some of these edges. Again, the leather wood, if you keep it nice and light, it will give you a really lovely canvasy texture to it. So you can just run that along some of these trees, right up these branches of the tree, right up to the very top, making sure I don't miss anything that stands out to me as needing a bit of color, zooming all the way out. I'm really pleased with how that looks. That's looking really, really nice. Again, you could come back in here if you really wanted to and add some more color to it. But we're gonna carry on. We're gonna go to our bushes here at the top. We are gonna go ahead and create separate layers. I always do. If you're struggling for layers, maybe do it all on one layer. But on a new layer here, I'm gonna to go to my colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab this color here, the top of the fifth column. I'm gonna go back though into our textures brush. We're gonna use the signet again. We're gonna set the brush size though to around about 4% to start with. It might be a little bit large. In fact, we'll probably drop it to three just in case. Again, focusing our sort of attention towards the right hand side of some of these bushes, I'm gonna go around kind of the base of the tree to start with. That's my most important area. Pressing really lightly and just one whole brush stroke here, trying to create a bushy area. So you're kind of creating rounded shapes, a bit like a cloud. You're kind of creating a circular shape where on the right hand edge here, you're gonna to start to add in this main green and then slowly but surely we'll build up more and more greens that stick on the right hand side. So if that's your example there, you can see I've got one there and I'm green, sort of adding a little element of green over towards this right hand side that sticks around the base of the tree. Again, I think the base of the tree is really important. So I'm gonna go around this top edge of what I imagine is another bush here. I'm gonna go in front of my tree. It pushes it backwards. It pushes it backwards in our design. That's really important for your layering. It tells the person looking at this, oh, okay, it's very obvious that that sits on maybe the opposite side of this mound of land and that I can now understand the sort of geography of that area that we've created. Now, I don't want to connect my sort of areas of the green together necessarily. I want to kind of still have that separation elements to it. So I'm just creating like a bit of a rounded shape there too. Let's bring the brush size down to a 2% and go along this edge down here, creating sort of rounded curving shapes. Maybe you create some in the dark areas here, such as here. Again, I don't want you to go all the way to the very edge though. So you may want to sort of either undo those or maybe grab your eraser and also go into the option of textures and the signet brush. Bring that down to about 3% and maybe just get rid of it should you need to. I want to preserve just the edge of the land so we can add in some rocky areas later on. So I'm going back to my brush now. I'm just going to introduce like another bush here another big big fluffy bush you can build up some of the green on that right hand side of it just to really pull it out from the ones in behind don't be afraid to leave dark gaps don't be afraid to do that at all you know leave the gaps in between it's just an empty void space it's not getting any light in that's drawing our attention and then maybe we'll just introduce a tiny bit over here on this left hand side that just goes off the off the screen off the canvas out of view. So I'm just gonna make a 3% brush size just to fill in the bushes with a little bit more green because again, we've got more tones to build on top. You still wanna preserve some of the green of this initial layer. So once you've done that, again, I'm gonna create separate layers. Feel free to do it on the same layer. It does not make a difference. I just do it so I've got more flexibility if I wanna change something. I'm gonna to go to my colors and grab the next color down to the middle of that uh, fifth column there. Brush wants to definitely be around about sort of the low threes, high twos. 
and in fact we will go to a high two. We're looking at our bushes here and we're going to go ahead and brighten up the top edge of them. So where you've added in the majority of the green such as here, you want to wiggle your pen along that edge. Not fully consistency, sort of full level of consistency should I say. Leave a gap here and there. You don't need to sort of go along the entirety of that top edge. Leave some areas with that original green. But where do you want to kind of plan out the rest of the greens, how they sit on this area of the bush so you can build on top of in a moment with some additional colors. So this will really brighten it up or start to look like it does anyway. Let's go along this edge here. I've got this kind of funky line running along here. That's cool. And then a little bit on the left hand side. I'm not going to brighten this one up too much over here. I don't want people being drawn to the edge of the canvas. It's not our main focal point. That's also something to factor into your work. You know, where do you want people to look in your work? Do you really want them looking at certain areas that you've not spent the majority of your time doing? You know, So let's add some there. I'm also leaving a bit of a dark spot here as if the tree maybe blocks a little bit of lighting, but we're taking a few artistic liberties today anyway. And then maybe the odd little patch in some of the gaps if you want to as well. We're going to introduce yet another color. Again, I'm going to create a separate layer, of course. Go to my colors and grab then the bottom of the fifth column there. And then we're going to introduce this one again, maybe kind of focusing a bit more on the right hand edge over here. This one's got a little less of sort of a saturation to it. Let's bring the brush size down to 2%. It's got a little less saturation to it. It's, it's a little bit brighter. So we're just going to see where we can dash on some of this color, little gaps here and there. Literally just put the odd little sort of stroke here and there just to break down the overall aesthetic of the bush. Doesn't have to brighten up every single element of it. Maybe a little bit like there. Oh, that's awesome. That's coming together nicely. Let's then go ahead and also introduce some yellowy tones. So that's going to be the bottom here of the uh, fourth column. Again, separate layer, should you wish. Let's bring the brush size down. I'm going to bring it down to a very low 2% now. And I'm just going to dance it along some of these bushes here. Now, again, what you can also do is you don't have to do every single bush. You can leave a bush. Maybe it's a different species of sort of bush potentially or plant should I say and therefore only sort of certain ones get a little bit of the yellow in there you know leave certain areas you don't have to do this one everywhere and you can do it really really sporadically you know, don't have to add in very much at all I'm going to go up a two percent a little bit larger though just to see if I can dance in some more yellow here I kind of want to transition those yellowy tones of the tree into some of the bush like shapes below a little something like this couple of random patches in any bush will look great. It's just variety. It's natural. It's beautiful. And that break up of all the different colors. Wicked. Let's go ahead, though, and do something really cool. Let's go ahead and create another new layer. Let's then make sure, though, that this is clipped to the land. So we need to bring it all the way down, down to here, tap on it, and clip it to the main shape of the land. We're going to go to our colors, and we're going to go ahead and grab this color here, the bottom of the third column from the right. Your brush wants to be painting. And the Salamanca brush. Let's see what the size is. The size is currently set to 4%. I reckon you could go up to 6 at a maximum. And we're dragging down in a bit of a diagonal sort of bottom right area. Just keep going along the edge of the land. Varying pressures. Varying sort of levels of packing in the colour. Heights as well. Bring the height of this up a tiny bit. Vary the angle as well from time to time. So varying in the angle here. And when you zoom out you should start to see how that land looks like it just runs right into the water and you're creating kind of the, the rocky edge almost or the dirt edge of the land where nothing's growing. Over here on the left hand side I'm going to keep it really really light. I do not want people really focusing too much in this area down here just simply because again we've got a beautiful big design over here. Why would I want anyone to look over there? In the dark areas over here I do recommend you add some. We don't want the sort of um, the, the land and the effects of it to be too dark and contrasty necessarily. And if you want to, you could maybe introduce like a little bit of a kind of rock here, for example, in the gaps, just an extra little element or two of just some interesting concepts of something. Maybe you darken that up, you know, maybe grab your eraser potentially if you want to, maybe even the signet brush and just take away a little bit of it just to bury it in there. Just take away just a tiny bit and it buries it in the land. Look how wicked that looks. And I think I think that's almost everything. Let's maybe try and add a bit more color here and there. Just to, again, vary up this area down here. 
of the land running into the water. I just love how this turns out. Very, very cool. Now that's actually done with, and that's actually the elements that sit sort of where we could reflect. So let's go ahead and actually put those elements in play in terms of the reflections. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, your land two is done with for the moment. Now, again, this is totally up to you depending on how you're gonna go about doing your layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tap on land two and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. However, if you're gonna struggle for layers, what you can do is just hold down here with the tick, turn off your background color, swipe down with three fingers and go to the option of copy or. Once you do that and swipe down with three fingers, go to paste and you'll get another version of your land here like so. Now I'm just gonna tap on my cursor when I'm done because we wanna move this. We wanna move this into the right position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it down. We're gonna hold down on it. We're gonna drag it down in front of this dark tone of water here. So right from left to right on both of those and group them together. And just let's rename this and call it water. We'll do the same quickly as well for the other elements we've created. So we're gonna tap on the tick here for land two. Don't worry, you can see it already because it's still there. We're gonna go to turn this off as well. We're gonna turn on land one. So land one is the only thing now you should see. Again, same trick, swipe down with three fingers, go to copy all and swipe down with three fingers again and go to paste. You'll get another version of it. Again, just leave it for the minute, it's fine. But other than that, just drag it into the water group and tap on the tick to turn it off. Again, turn off land one as well. So nothing showing at the minute. We turn on our mountains again. We're gonna go ahead and tap away. Swipe with three fingers, go to copy all. Swipe with three fingers and go to paste. We'll go ahead and go to our layers. It should have inserted it in the water group, which would be perfect. And you've got that turned on. Now let's just turn it off for a minute so everything's turned off. We know exactly what we're doing now. So let's turn on land one, land two, the sky and our background color and this gradient here. Let's go ahead then and grab this layer here, turn it on, grab our cursor. We'll move over here. We'll go to the option of flip vertical. We'll drag it down and we just wanna drag it down really until the points of the land on the right hand side there are pretty much matching up. So once you get to kind of this point here, yes, you can't see all of it, but that's kind of the point of it. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the layer, tap on it and use the drawing assist. We'll go to our smudge tool. We'll tap on our smudge. We're gonna go back into painting and the Salamanca brush. I've got the opacity set to 57%, just like before. And my size can be around about say 25%. What you're gonna to wanna to do is just start to smudge down. So smudging down. Now, if you're not seeing too much movement, you may need to start pressing a little bit firmer or otherwise bring your brush size down to 50, like a smaller size and kind of press a little bit firmer so you don't smudge too much of it in one go. So I'm just dragging down. I also need to drag from a little bit higher up. I'm just trying to get rid of it, but not lose too much of it, okay? I'm trying to drag it down, but not lose too much, but you will get this fantastic canvasy style texture. Now at the minute, the layer is set to 100% just while we smudge it, but that will actually get uh, toned down as well. So it won't be quite as saturated and as colorful as you're seeing right now. Let's smudge the tree. And this is where you may be gonna start to see a little bit of a dark blob appearing. That's perfectly fine. It's not a problem. Just moving a few of these elements down, smudging downwards, making sure we try not to sort of distort it too much, but we still wanna, of course, be able to kind of work it out. But I do wanna make sure that, you know, it doesn't sort of draw your attention too much. Those mountains are what we want people to look at, right? That's what we spent sort of the main focus of this design looking at. Lovely stuff. Nice little reflection there, nice and sort of broken down, got loads of texture in there. And don't be afraid to maybe sort of really go for the odd random point and really drag that down and take it, dragging it further down your screen. Once you've got something like this, you can go ahead and go to the layer. You can tap on it and bring its opacity down. And we're gonna bring it down to the 70% mark. So it brings in a little bit of the blue, you lose it a little bit in the water and that's perfect. Let's repeat. So we go up to the next reflection that we created. It's the land further back. We turn that on. We'll go ahead and we'll tap on it and add the drawing assist while we're here. We'll go to our cursor. We'll flip it vertically, move it towards the left hand side. You may need to zoom out. And we're gonna make sure that the points on the end there match up. So the points at the end are nice. And again, just like we did here, tap on your cursor when you're done. 
and let's start smudging. Same principles. We're just pushing down, smudging them out. Maybe go for a larger brush size, maybe something around about 22%, maybe. Again, because these are a little bit further back, just like when we drew them, we're not too interested in the details of it. Again, also this one needs to be turned down in opacity in a moment too. For the minute, we're just keeping it nice and dark so we can see what we're doing. But these ones can really get quite distorted and that's perfectly fine. As we get a little bit smaller towards the uh, area of land there, it doesn't look like I'm gonna have too much space to sort of work in. So we'll smudge these as best as we can, dragging them down the tiniest little bit if we can at all. That looks pretty good. I'm just looking for any blatantly obvious areas that I've maybe missed. You know, I don't want any trees having too much bold detail in there. We want to kind of tone it down by smudging it down. Lovely stuff. Let's go for an, a couple of random large 30% brush strokes in here as well, just to really make sure I've really toned it down a little bit in certain areas. Wicked. Let's also go to that layer. Let's tap on it and bring its opacity down to 70%. Beautiful stuff. And now you've got a nice little reflection of your trees in the distance. And of course, we've got our mountain. We're going to go ahead and turn that on. Now, this is in the wrong position currently. We're going to hold down on it. We're going to drag it down so it's just above the gradient at the back. We'll go to our layer. We'll tap on it and we'll add the drawing assist in anticipation of that. We'll go to our cursor. We will flip it vertically and drag it down. And if you go to snapping and make sure snapping is turned off, because this turned on, should I say, because this goes edge to edge, you should then be able to drag it down to the point where you then see these orange lines on either side and in the middle, which lets you know that you've nicely brought your image all the way down. Now, if we tap on our cursor here, we can see I've dragged it down, but only to the point where I start to get that hazy effect here. I don't want this to be too high and we are really going to distort this. Now, just for sort of, your understanding of how much we're going to distort it. We're going to go to the layer and bring the opacity right down to 50% so it does not interfere with kind of your smudging. Go back to the smudge tool, same principles, and we're pushing down. I'm using a large brush size because it's further away. I'm going to go to 35% here and I'm really going to try and make sure that there is nothing left in terms of a crispy detail in there. Like maybe the odd outlier but I don't want it to take away from any of the work around it and the rest of the design. So I'm also going to start to make sure that we smudge a little bit from the top up here. So you may have to really push it down quite a bit to avoid these dark lines here. You see that? That's actually the design that's sitting too high up. Maybe I could grab my cursor and move that down, in fact, because I can clearly see it's a little bit too high. You may have the same problem. That's why I've left it in the video for you. And I'm just going to make sure there's nothing behind these trees. There's nothing. And then it will push this down onto the water. Make sure over here on the left-hand side is not interfering in any way either. Pushing that down. You can push it quite far down as well to the point where you really reveal this tree line more so than the, the mountain. And then again, just keep smudging. Keep smudging. Push up from the bottom. Don't always have to sort of drag it all the way to the very bottom of your canvas. Maybe you have to drag it down to then drag it back up again. You know, there are levels to the smudging, of course. Here, we'll try and get rid of a little bit of the ones that sit behind that forest level. I want them to all have that separation in the reflection, you know, make sure that this has got a good amount of space to sit and live and thrive in its own reflection. You shouldn't end up with this beautiful effect. Look how this has all come together. And we've got more effects to add to the water too. We can go into the water group and create another new layer. We'll go to our colors. Let's go ahead and grab this color. Let's grab this color here, yeah, the middle of the third column from the right. We'll go to our brush. We're gonna change it to the option again of artistic in the leatherwood, but we're gonna bring the opacity down to around about 30% and the size is gonna be really, really small, about 1% here. And you're just gonna to wanna to run along kind of the water's edge here, adding in some beautiful uh, sort of water effects on here. So just showing how the water makes its way up towards the, the edge there. And maybe we'll smudge these out potentially if we feel it's necessary. You know, kind of making sure we press over it a few times. Maybe bring the opacity up. Let's be a bit braver. Let's go to 60% there to add in the odd sort of brighter spot. 60 looks a little bit too much, but maybe it's more in your face. Maybe that's the good thing. Let's maybe bring that down to about sort of 50 though for safety. Let's go along there. 
couple of odd sort of stray lines here. Just small, making sure they're quite horizontal though. We want to kind of match up to the rest of it. And then a couple more out of that area there because obviously the water would come round. It would sort of hit this area of land and then kind of ripple off this way, wouldn't it? It would kind of create small ripples in the water as the flow gets disturbed slightly. In the distance, we're going to keep up. Let's make our brush size even smaller, about 1% again. I want to kind of go along the line there almost of the land, just trying to show again that it's water and kind of separate the two. I don't want to add too much, but just a tiny little sort of nod to say that there is like water that goes right up to that edge there of the land. And you really sort of step it out from its reflection. You know, you bring it out, you step it towards us a little bit. And we understand straight away how this design's all laid out. Let's add in the odd random little speck of light here in the water, not too much. I don't want to overdo it at all. It's more so to just bring the elements on top of the water. Back there, that's too bright. So we're going to have to be careful and try and do it in one brush stroke, maybe. If you can go along that edge there, bring that out. And again, you can always come back to it and add some more. We have got one area of land right at the very front here to create. So we're going to go ahead and create two new layers, of course, swipe from left to right, group that together, and we'll call it land three, just so it's nice and consistent with the rest of it. And on land three, we're going to go to the bottom layer out of the two as always. We're going to go to our colors. I'm going to grab this color here, the top of the third column. Go to your brush and go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. Our land is going to run out to around about here. Okay, so the sort of two thirds across in that second column and it's going to run out to a point that's going to sit roughly height wise around about here okay but it's going to swoop down pretty quickly for example we're going to end up with like a point here and we're going to end up with a point roughly around about there so it's going to really sort of swoop down so go along your dot to dots coming along here and then let that kind of just smooth out as it makes its way off of our screen and drag and drop your color into that space maybe get rid of any bumps and lumps that you feel is necessary of your little dot to dot, maybe just integrate it in. So once you've got your area of land here, we're going to repeat a similar sort of approach. We're going to create our tree. So we're going to go to the empty layer above. We're going to go to our brush. We're going to go into artistic and the leather wood again. Let's set the opacity though to 100%. We're going to set the size to around about three or 4%. And your tree is going to want to go all the way up into the top quarter here of our design. It's going to run to around about here. And so we can draw in that main line that runs all the way down. Now, temporarily, you may want to go ahead and say where land two is, create a new layer, go to your colors and double tap in the top left and drag white into the screen. Because we've got a couple of dark tones in behind, we're not going to necessarily see our tree. So going back to our tree and making sure our color again is the top of the third column from the right, uh, sorry, top of the third column. We're going to go down our trunk here, make sure it's nice and dark, make sure it's Got a good solid bit of color to it. Bring that brush size to around about 3% and repeat what we did before. So we're gonna just make sure it's nice and solid at the top. We're gonna go left to right and maybe 3% might be a bit too much. Maybe it might be perfect. Let's see. I'm gonna jump down a tiny bit just so I can start to gauge my width and my brush is too big. I'm gonna go to 2%. I wanna be in a bit more control and also have a little bit more room for detail of the branches right at the very front of our design you know you have to try and sort of factor that in with your work if it's right at the front it should have the most level of detail unless you're trying to do like a shallow depth of focus where the elements in the background are nice and in focus and the elements right in front of you are a little bit more uh, out of focus and then let's jump down a little bit i think down here we're going to end up with a bit of a width that pretty much goes the whole of that far right column of our drawing guide so we can go ahead and just dash these in across here. That's fairly straight. Maybe we could curve that at the top a tiny bit. Again, I'm trying to just sort of jump to certain points just so I can gauge the width of where I think I want things to be at that certain point. And then I can go ahead and keep making my way down. Go along these edges in the gaps, maybe where you think that the odd branch might be, might be living. I'm just going to rotate my canvas a little bit more. And all these little branches all running off. Maybe you have some strays coming down from the branch above, you know, like that. You know, add in the odd little random new element here and there. And create another one. 
going to let that one get really close to the one above. Maybe have a bit more of a droop down on this one. Let the leather wood create your tree for you. All you're doing is just sort of guiding it really, but it's doing all the legwork. And we're going to keep going. Just keep going all the way down, filling in our tree. Again, try to sort of break up the sort of repetition if there is any, you know, try and have branches maybe a little bit closer together potentially in certain areas. Again, let the brush maybe just go to town and add in a bunch of texture. Just see what you can do just to create the sort of random realistic approach to life. You know, all of these branches will have lots and lots of randomness to them. So for me, for example, I could maybe go in here and just in a few more of these gaps, maybe sort of make it a little bit more dense by just introducing the odd smaller branch. Maybe we could add in the odd little speck that runs astray slightly, maybe just a few random lines from the one above that just strays a little bit further down. Again, trying to break up that sort of very obvious kind of line, 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 you know, try and introduce new elements like so, but try not to block it at the same time. So it's a real fine balance here. Again, just like before, we're going to zoom out and we're going to go ahead and add some bushes in the same way. So we'll create another new layer, go back to our brush. We'll change it back into textures in the signet brush. Set the brush to around about four, maybe five percent on the size in there. And again, we're going to go around sort of the base. You may have to go over it a couple of times because this brush again does come in a little bit kind of transparent just to start with. So a large one there, maybe like another one here as well. Again, I'm going over it a few times just to really pack in the color. And then maybe we introduce like another one down here, a little bit closer towards the sort of water side, although we're not going to see the water side from our angle, just so there's a little bit of something happening a little bit closer. Maybe the odd little sort of dashes here and there just to break up the circular motion as well. Just like the tree, we have to introduce random elements here and there just to, again, make them look like they have that randomness of life. We'll go back in with the tree though. So what we can do now is we can go back down to the tree. We can create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it. Now, before we go ahead and add in the greens, I want to go to my colors and I want to go ahead and I want to grab this color here, the bottom of the third column. If we go back to our brush, I want to go back to uh, the option of artistic and leatherwood. We're going to bring the opacity down to about 70% there. I want to bring the brush to around about sort of two or 3% and I want to run sort of down here, leave a few gaps. So I'm letting go. I'm trying to just introduce the trunk of the tree. So I'm letting go, creating little gaps here and there, just creating like a vertical line that runs down the middle just to show a little bit of the wood there of the tree. Then we can go ahead and create another new layer, tap on it, clipping mask it so it's then clipped to the tree. We'll go to our colors. Just like before, we're gonna grab this color here, the middle there of the fifth column or sixth column, should I say, sorry. And we're gonna carry on. Now I'm gonna set the uh, brush opacity to 100%. We may just reduce it afterwards. Um, with the actual full layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our brush size to run about sort of three to two percent and we're going to go along again in a similar fashion. Overlap your brown there of your, your main tree uh, trunk in the middle just so you get that stacking, the layering effect of everything. As you get a little bit lower towards the bottom just have the odd little random tap here in there but nothing too intense. So it may be easier to start at the top, it may be easier to start at the bottom, it's totally up to you. We'll go along some of the branches introducing the green again i'm probably going to reduce the layer opacity afterwards potentially just so that the green's not quite as strong but it is a bit closer towards us so therefore it should be technically a little bit brighter it should be in terms of saturation but it should also have a dark contrast to it so let's see if we can balance that delicate sort of dance between saturation and brightness again along the top edges Trying to add a little bit more towards these right edges though. So right on the very edge of the right hand side. Going along, adding in some green. I've got a nice green patch there in the middle. Really happy with how that looks. And don't be afraid to just dan tap and dance the pen in those gaps. You know, let it just attach itself to the odd random branch here and there by just adding in a dash line. And that's just a branch facing right at you. You've added in a cool amount of level of detail without having to sort of purposely do it. Just dash it in there. Let it just connect where it wants to connect. Zoom all the way out, of course. Make sure you're happy with the overall level. Let's go ahead and create another new layer. Tap on it, clipping mask it. Go to the colors and grab the bottom color again in that sixth column. 
and we'll dance our pen along again. Maybe bring it a slight bit smaller, maybe a large 2%. And this one's going to end up with a lot of bright tones in here. So try to sort of balance it a little bit. Don't overdo it, but let the green still pop through. You know, you still want to have that nice, again, dance between all the different colors. I'm just going to keep going. There's a lot of fun to be had here. Obviously, you could just duplicate the tree that we did on the left-hand side if you really want to, if you're kind of fed up of it. But, you know, you get to really sort of practice your skills, focus in on which parts maybe you could improve on, and then know the next time what to maybe spend a little bit more time on. Or on in between the two different types of trees, maybe you, you know, work on the things that you know you didn't quite like from the first one. There's always elements we don't like. There's loads of stuff I always don't like in my work. But it's always about sort of identifying them and seeing what maybe you can improve next time. Maybe it's the general shape of the tree. Maybe it's how you added in all the color. Now towards the bottom, I'm going to let that just kind of just die out a little bit towards this bottom area here. I don't want it to be too dominant in that space. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our bushes. Now we can get rid of that temporary white layer now for a minute. Delete it. We're going to go up above our bushes. We're not going to clip a layer, but we're going to create a new one, of course. Go to our colors. We're going to introduce the same kind of green tones again. So the top of the fifth column, your brush wants to go back into the option of textures and signet. Set the brush size to around about sort of 5%. And let's try and sort of work out where we want to lay our bushes. Now, when I first drew this, I did not put the path in first. So I'm going to go ahead and with a brush size probably a little bit larger than I should do, probably about 8% here, I'm going to go ahead and create some large bushes in here and not worry about the path. So I'm gonna put a bush in there too. I'm gonna to put another bush here, like so, adding in the green areas. And then maybe we just introduce like a, a green area here. Maybe don't go right to the very bottom right at the, the sort of uh, canvas here, and a little bit here. We'll just overlay the path on top. I don't want you to focus on adding in the path now because it will, it will change how you lay the bushes out. And how I did it in my practices, again, was that I never, actually purposely added it in the path was very much an afterthought so i just layered it on top and i want you to go through the same process so that you kind of experience the same thing i did now we'll go to our layers you can do it on the same one or as always create a new layer go to your colors and grab the next color down the middle of that fifth column again we're going to start to punch in the color what are we up to now we're at six percent on the old brush size so trying to brighten up some of the bushes here we're larger brush size because we're very close to camera or the, the person looking at this scene that you're creating so we can add in some much larger strokes to start with and we're going to introduce the snow gum afterwards we'll bring that brush size down though a tiny bit to five percent just to add in some bush like areas here it's going to sort of add in a bit more green on there again don't be afraid to leave dark areas lovely stuff and then maybe a little one towards the bottom there we'll go to our colors we'll go down the color again so the bottom of the uh, fifth column uh, from this point, I'm just going to do it on the same layer with these green tones. So a little bit of a brighter tone again, dashing it in, tapping it in almost as well. You don't have to necessarily focus it too much in like a streak or a stroke and just tap it in. Don't overdo it, but also don't do it in every single spot. I've left that bush there. I'll add in a little bit more towards the base of here. Now that's your bush is done for that point. We're now going to go ahead and create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors and we've got these four colors here, which are going to be our bushes and the wild flowers in there. So, for example, we will go ahead and we'll grab, let's grab the tone here. We'll grab the bottom of the fourth column to start with. We're going to go to our brush. We're going to go into the option of organic and the snow gum. We have got the brush I set to about 4%. This is pressure sensitive, so the harder you press, the more flowers you'll add in here. I do want to make sure I'm on an empty layer, so I'm going to create a new layer. And then coming down in towards this bush down here, I'm going to tap and add in some random colored leaves, but also maybe they're flowers. It's totally up to you and how you envision it when you look at it. Maybe bring the brush size down, maybe down to like a three or maybe even a 2%. It's pressure sensitive. So the lighter you press, you'll get some really nice diddy small flowers in here. But maybe you want to add in like a, a large cluster and maybe some larger areas. So add that in. Don't be afraid to add in the odd spec in the dark areas as well. It's just where a little little shoot has come up and you've got a little bit of the lovely colour popping through. That's done. We can then go ahead and go to our colours. Let's move to the pink tone here, the middle of that fourth column, and add in some pink on this one. Don't be afraid, though, to 
intertwine them so maybe put a couple of dashes of pink in here nothing too much and then have individual bushes for the colors as well so it's kind of neighboring color that you add in can sort of be added into uh, the previous one as well so you can sort of overlay them a few times maybe so here i'm just going to sort of stretch the pink out into here a tiny bit again a couple in the little outer darker spots are good then go to your colors let's then grab the green tone here the middle of that uh, third column put the greens in here along with a few like so maybe a few in there as well and let those greens all run down towards the base of the tree, a little bit up in this top right area. Leave gaps though, we don't wanna over dense it. Let's go to our colors and grab the bottom of the uh, third column. That's probably not even a phrase, sorry, my mind's going a little bit scrambled. It always happens at a long recording, but yeah, you don't wanna make it too dense. That's what we're going for. So let's add in some more specs here, maybe a few in this bush here. Maybe this bush has got like a real cluster of different tones in here, a couple of the orange tones then making their way up towards the right hand side a couple in the dark spots as before and you should have these beautiful designs here just come together again don't be afraid to go back through your layers you know if you're happy with the bushes which i am if i pinch those bushes together excluding the bottom dark color so more the greens go to your eraser tap on your eraser and use the signet brush and then just break down some of your bushes you know create additional gaps in here you know this is very close to camera so the kind of more intricate you can make these, the better, you know, create dark grooves around the top of a highlight such as here. Here, I can maybe, you know, break that down, maybe disconnect it completely, and maybe create like a couple of darker spots towards the bottom areas of some of these bushes. Maybe disconnect this a tiny bit, you know, really think about how you can add in some interesting highlights and shadows in here just to kind of add in some more interest. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna introduce the path. And this again was an addition I created afterwards. So I'll go ahead and create a new layer at the very top. I'll go to my colors and I'll grab the bottom here of the third column from the right. We'll go to our brush and we'll go back into painting and the Salamanca brush. Maximum opacity size wise, we could probably get away with a fairly large size. Let's go to the 24% uh, mark. And just here, I wanna create a path, okay? This path is just where we're maybe stood on and we can make our way around the lake here and you're gonna to have to go over your path a few times there just to really sort of take it down quite a bit. And then lightly, just a few extra strokes above it just to kind of blend it in. Now, it takes a little while for your mind to re-register obviously what we're looking at. And in fact, the fact that you've now introduced a path in there, but there are elements that we can introduce here to kind of break it all in. So we can go to the top color here of the top of the third column, bring the brush size down to maybe sort of a five to 7% range, and then maybe sort of, Take a look here and can you kind of darken up a little bit, maybe around the base of the bushes. So like create like shadows here. And now you're gonna slowly start to blend the environment that we previously created with the path. So like here, I can kind of press a little bit firmer because I've got a nice dark spot there to try and sort of blend these small little bushes. Maybe you have to go back in and grab your eraser, for example, grab your eraser and go back to the signet brush. Maybe we have to do that and grab our 4% and we go round in a circle, round a little bush or something that you think could sit on top maybe. So like a little something like this and maybe a little bit out of here as well. You know, like they grow over the top of the path maybe. Now we've kind of integrated it all together. We can then go back to our brush. Maybe now if we go back up to our color, make sure again it's the top of the third column, but we go back to our layer now because we've cut stuff out of it. Maybe if we tap on it and we alpha lock it, that allows us to then just simply paint around the bottom of these bushes. So now we can introduce like a little bit of a uh, shadow towards the underside of them now on, on our path, which then should hopefully now really integrate everything together like so. You can get rid of some of the dark, the lighter tone that stretch a bit, stretches a bit too far. You know, let's go ahead and sort of erode, erode into here. See what I mean? I'm going a little bit loopy. Bring the brush size down to 4%. Let's maybe try and introduce some like breakdown in the ground here. Let's try and really break this down, introducing some cuts and you know, break up of the dirt. Maybe it's just a the dirt path here coming along here. Now, if you've done some of my Patreon exclusive tutorials, you can see I'm just bringing the brush size down to 2%. I did for my 100th, like an inch, it had a really detailed path in it. And that spent a little bit of time just really sort of breaking down the ground, creating these eroded kind of 
breakups of the ground and that can take a little bit of time but right now it's totally up to you how much time you've got left you could really spend some time detailing this path again but the main thing to do is just break it up like this so you've got nice shadows then go to your colors let's then grab say this more warm tone here the bottom of the second column from the right and let's try and sort of pave that in in the middle so we go left to right in the middle of our path avoiding our shadows because it's all on one layer in the middle we're going to try and sort of patch in this more warm tone in here lovely stuff that's looking great now you've got the mix up of the two tones you've got a break down towards the edges of the path where you've got the sort of break in here and then bring the brush size down to like a two percent and then where you've got your dark tones just go kind of over the top of them so you kind of create these like ditches and grooves and stuff but you end up with kind of like highlighted patches on top because you've introduced some dark tones so you introduce like these highlights that kind of sit on the top edge and you end up with fantastic layered ground it can take a while to build up ground i'm going over the top of some of these extra areas here just seeing if i can show you the contour the sort of level of the ground is not sort of flat it's really uneven and you can let that just really run all the way up to the very end you know maybe we brighten up the path again in the middle maybe we go back through with a, a little bit more color really try and boost it up down here at the bottom where we get a little bit brighter maybe into the sunlight again and maybe we make these ones a little bit brighter again don't be afraid also to go in with like a really small one or two percent brush size and create tiny little sort of specks in here just tiny little sort of breakups and erosion in the ground. Tiny little breakups. Lots and lots of mini detail. And because we've added levels of detail such as here, we need to kind of replicate that. If we go to the top of the third column again and we get in here, that's probably a bit too dark. So let's bring the opacity right down to 40%. And then in here, try and build up again some tiny little dark areas of detail, little breakups in the ground. Maybe a couple more coming from the side. Maybe it's like another groove or something. Maybe in some of those shadows, you maybe sort of darken them up a bit more to show that they're a little bit less smooth and they haven't been walked on very much. But when you zoom out, you should get the impression now that we've got this path just running round. The only adjustment you may need to make, just like me, is if we go to our tree, those opacities are too strong, way too strong. We're going to bring the uh, opacity down maybe to around about the 70% mark on both the yellow and the green so once they get toned down that should start to sort of settle into its space a bit more if it is still a little bit too punchy you can always go ahead and bring the green down a little bit further maybe down to around about sort of 58 percent it's going to be a bit of a balance for each individual person and how much sort of color you added in here and just before we finish there's one other layer we need to make if we go into our layers we go into the water group this layer here has a little bit too much of a darker tone now on the same layer or you can create a new layer like i'm going to do you can go to your colors we're going to grab the middle color here in the second column from the right and you want to go to your brush you want to go to airbrushing and the soft brush got the brush i set to about 15 percent here and just in this closer area down here we're going to go left to right left to right and just kind of build in a little bit of a brighter blue down here right down here at the bottom of our design and now if we go ahead and we pinch with two fingers and we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. Thank you so much for spending the time with me to paint this design together. And if you did create today's design, make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, anywhere else you want to tag me in your work. The best place you can come and share your work with me, though, is my Discord. It's completely free to join as other Procreate enthusiasts sharing their work daily in our community tabs. And as always, if you want to support me in the work that I do here on the channel, you can become a patron and come and join me over on Patreon, where I post three exclusive tutorials every single month to my Patreon supporters in the catalogs. It's over 100 Patreon exclusive tutorials with three added every single month. It just continues to grow and grow and grow. You can have your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access and much, much more. So again, hit the link in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this video here on YouTube, you'll love this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.